Welcome to Acupuncture on the Hill. Um, we have done five iterations of this so far, and every single one of them has been different. And we've learned a lot from each of those. And so we feel like even though we're still learning, um, this is a, a combination, a very collaborative effort to come up with the most effective, safest way to deliver acupuncture treatments on the hill um, that aren't necessarily a demonstration because we want that differential diagnosis. We want them to understand the difference between uh, acupuncture as performed by other practitioners who wield it as a modality and um, what they will get when they are treated by a licensed acupuncturist. All right, why do we do this? So um, AccuCongress Acu has a, a mission of training all acupuncturists to advocate for their profession. If you don't advocate for your profession, other people who are actually uh, using acupuncture and want to um, see it expand, they will decide for you how acupuncture is going to be presented federally and who's going to be able to do it. Um, so we bring acupuncture on the hill to make our legislative efforts easier to achieve. Um, it's easier to pass legislation when people experience this medicine. It just is. So there was something, some tipping point this last time. And I think that the pr practitioners who were in the room can tell you this was no longer a case where people had not heard of acupuncture before. This was the case that they're relegated to whatever they know of acupuncture from what they've heard. And so we wanna make sure that they experience this. Uh, we wanna make sure that everybody understands the difference in our skill set and our clinical and didactic training and, and recognize the superiority of our treatments. And I'm not trying to be arrogant or, or any mean any disrespect to any other practitioners However, our theory um, that we learn that other people do not, that actually makes a difference in, in these treatments. We are the experts in the field of acupuncture. We need to claim our medicine. And so why do we do this? To unite us. So we want to make sure that people are trained for any and all efforts. I don't care uh, who's doing that. Um, I'm no longer in the trade association business. I've done that for 25 years. It is really important to me that no matter who people choose to align with, we all have the same goal of getting acupuncture into this legislation, but also acupuncturists into uh, mandates for the Social Security Act. And that's really just the first step. Um, there's so much more that goes along with being a consistent, uh, constant constituent um, but this is where we begin. Our promise to the industry, AccuCongress works with everyone. We now have a list that has been honed over time based on uh, lists that come out of state licensing. Um, so there's over 20,000 practitioners on it. We want to promote any and every national, state, or school advocacy effort um, and campaign that helps enhance awareness of our medicine and the practitioners who love it, learned it, and wield it. So requirements and guidelines for practitioners and ambassadors. I put this up on Basecamp and I believe I sent it out to our uh, the people who are on our list. Um, I'm not going to go through this uh, reading it right here, but the most important things are when we have training sessions, you do need to attend those. And I will record them so that we can accommodate everybody's time. Um, the last thing in the world that I want to do is constantly be on a Zoom call. I do that enough all day long. Um, you have to sign ethical waivers and liability release forms to enter the room. Those are mine. Uh, you need to make sure that I'm clear of all liability, and then you have got to conduct yourselves in a way in which you will not be liable for anything uh, at all. <laughs> There's really no expanding on that. You must be able to work as a team and uh, take direction. Compliance in this room is non-negotiable. Anybody who violates any ethical requirements must leave the room immediately. No scenes. We will do this quietly. Um, I'm not here to shame anybody. However, I can't have people breaking safety protocols. There are some activist related requirements, but they, you don't have to do it through goose chase. And quite honestly, we want everybody in that room to make sure that they understand the mechanics of the bill and we want them to be activists on their own. So we will uh, help you build your pitch. 
We will help you with your outreach and we will schedule the meeting while you're there. So the main thing is that we want you to be able to talk about this bill. And don't worry, I didn't throw anything up here today for everybody, I don't wanna bore you. Um, essentially, it comes down to a couple of things. One is that we want our little, out of our little four page bill, if it's not going to pass on its own, we want it to have the possibility of being able to be stripped and put into a larger omnibus bill. And that's always, always been the goal. And we still have that chance to do that. But even if we don't, even if we fail at that one thing, the momentum that we have going into interim elections is so important. And then once the elections happen, we will seek out the same co-sponsorship uh, with a reintroduced bill, and we will start that process again. But this is something that has to happen all the time anyway. So I understand that advocacy fatigue happens. Um, I understand that better than most in this field. And we are trying to make this so that it is easy for you to be a part of this. Um, and then to make sure that you understand that you're not just a practitioner in the room, you need to under, you know, you need to understand the bill and you need to be able to convey that if you are asked questions. Um, in all likelihood, you won't be. That's what I'm here for. And I'll be standing outside of the rooms just like I did last time to capture as much data as I possibly can about how their experience was and any follow-up that they wanna do. And most of them are asking how they can help. Um, I used to have to say uh, to most of them that CMS covers opioids, but not acupuncture. Now I have to say to them, CMS covers acupuncture, but not acupuncturists. And it is sinking in that there's something very, very wrong with that setup. Again, ethical waivers and liability forms. We're gonna need a copy of your malpractice insurance and we're gonna need a, uh, you to be at least prepared to show proof of your licensure. Um, it's never happened, but uh, just in case, I can't, I can't have somebody standing in that room without proof of their licensure. Again, teamwork and compliance are there for your protection, the protection of congressional staff and anybody else who comes through that room and for the protection of acupuncture on the Hill coordinators. Um, so I don't care how good a, a clinical practitioner you are, you must adhere to the rules of engagement in these rooms. No business cards, no exceptions, um, no recording devices and no posting pictures or discussion of individu individual treatments on social media. I don't think I have to tell anybody that, but we do need to go ahead, I guess, and put it up there just so people are clear. Again, no business cards, no exceptions. We can't offer anything to congressional staff that the public would not receive. And so no gifts of any kind. They don't wanna fill out an ethics report and most of the stuff that people give them will probably end up in the trash. So no free follow-up services, no herbs, no gifts at all. You're serving your industry, not expanding your network. No recording devices allowed. Uh, I think we all know why. And then once again, please don't post about this on social media, especially with any details of individual treatments. Do we want people feeling safe and we want them protected and we don't want them to feel like uh, we are putting them out in any way or that any of their information would be shared in a public forum. In fact, we've promised them that. All right, students. They're the future of acupuncture. We want student involvement. And that is why this recording is gonna go out to everyone. Um, I love working with students and I really, really love um, being able to teach them advocacy tools while they're in school so that they can be better advocates for their profession. So I will never turn down anybody who wants to be an ambassador for this medicine. And um, it's just as important to work registration and uh, greet congressional staff and take them back and, and be holding that space to take care of them. We, we really, really want you there. So if you're interested, and, and I'll just, as a side, um, especially the schools that are in the DC area, um, I know that my school uh, dismissed their last, their most recent cohort but I'm pretty sure that they probably still have uh, practitioners in clinic who um, haven't finished their education yet. 
and we want them to be able to be proud of their medicine and to to come and advocate for it. So uh, anybody at Maryland University of Integrative Health, uh, we'd love to see you in there. I know that there are schools in Pennsylvania and um, in Virginia, and quite frankly, uh, as far away as New York, if you guys are interested, um, we want you there. Ambassadors are uh, very important. People will never forget the way that you make them feel. And so we want people treated with the respect that they deserve and the care that they need. We want you to be kind, discreet, but absolutely tuned in uh, to our guests for the day. And if there are any issues whatsoever, um, come see me. Seek uh, AOTH coordinators who are on site first. Um, you do not need to handle anything in that room. We will take care of that for you. Um, I want them to know what it feels like to be held energetically um, in a way that conduces healing. Um, what types of ambassadors do we need? Registration ambassadors, um, people who are going to escort staff to the room, and then safety ambassadors are really important. I want people to make sure that nobody is putting in points in the body, that nobody's doing manipulation that they shouldn't be doing. It's not that I need oversight for these amazing practitioners. You guys are incredible, but you never know. Moreover, safety ambassadors are also there for the patients at the end. I believe I'm gonna bring my table just in case anybody needs to lay down. If any of our AOTH practitioners want to bring theirs too, these are small rooms, they fit about 60 people. So I have two rooms. Anybody else who wants to bring one in, I'm happy to, to make sure that that's set up so that if for some reason we have patients who would be uh, happier laying down after a treatment, that we have a place for them. We will provide them with water. Um, we're gonna encourage them to eat before they come, but um, Capitol Hill staff are usually on a very tight schedule and uh, they don't always get to be able to do that. So the event flow, we have two rooms this time. Um, I did not ask for two rooms. <laughs> They offered it to me. Um, they actually offered me three, but uh, due to some health concerns that I have for myself, I don't need to be walking across campuses um, at this time. And so it's the first time we've ever been in the US Capitol building. <sighs> Let me talk about that for a second. Um, post Jan 6, they do not release any uh, diagrams of the rooms. I will, not, they don't let you come in and just take a, a look at them. Um, so I won't know until 7.30 in the morning what these rooms look like at all. Um, I have requested a certain amount of chairs and uh, I have been told what the capacity is at any given time. I've requested the registration tables, but as the practitioners can tell you from the last time when they stuck us in uh, the room in Canon, um, you know, sometimes you got to pivot and dance a little bit. Sometimes uh, you may not you may not be happy with the room setup, but we set this up like a free clinic. This is not a spa environment. We these people are heavy on the go, and we are there to respond to their needs. Um, and if they've got to get up and go, they've got to get up and go. Many of them are going to be looking at their phones because they have to be connected to their bosses, and their bosses are flying in that day. Um, I would like for people to come in and be able to set up and then help us tear it down um, if they can. That is my phone number up there in red. You need to absolutely put that in your phone. Um, I text people. My phone doesn't ring anymore because I work on Capitol Hill, so I can't have a ringing phone, but it lights up and it will light up a whole movie theater and my bags. So you can find me if you have any questions. These are the very simple day of considerations. Practitioners, dress professionally, uh, white lab coat or scrubs preferred, um, but I'm not going to kick anybody out of the room who comes dressed professionally, just like they do in their offices, especially if they work from home. Um, comfortable footwear is a must. These are long days. They're brutal days, actually. You're gonna see a lot of people and there's not necessarily a lot of time for breaks, but we are gonna do our level-headed best to make sure that you're comfortable that day. Bring your ID, a copy of malpractice insurance and proof of your state licensure. Um, you do have to have a congressional escort to get into the building. 
So I need you to have your phone on you. It's mandatory for communication. You will have to text me if you don't show up at the times that we're uh, designating in order to get into the building with us. So um, that doesn't count you out from getting in. I just need to know when you need an escort. And so uh, make sure that you have my phone number, which is right there, um, and that you text me immediately if you need to get in. For ambassadors, dress professionally. Um, we want you comfortable and confident on this day, but no jeans, no t-shirts, no shirts with words on them whatsoever. Please don't get political. Everybody needs to drop their politics at the door. I know that sounds strange to be on Capitol Hill, but um, as a, you know, in advocacy, we work with everybody. And so I know people have preconceived notions about different parties and maybe even different offices, but their staff is usually lovely and we want them treated with respect no matter what office they're coming uh, from. You do need to bring your ID. Um, you'll also need an escort into the building. You may not necessarily need to give your ID in order to get in the building, but God forbid you don't have it and you need it. So I don't want you driving all the way to DC um, and leaving your ID in the car and then having to go back and get it. Uh, that's a nightmare. Just bring it on your person. Um, and then the last thing is be prepared to pivot at a moment's notice. Um, the Capitol Hill environment is a very unique environment. These people are on the go. <laughs> they are um, very determined to get through their day, uh, meet people where they are. And so if you have a moment in which I, I don't, you know, you have a staff member who, who says to you, I have to take these needles out and I have to go. Um, don't, don't hound them. I assure you that has more to do uh, with their schedule and not about the acupuncture treatment. Um, I'll be there to, to check in with them on the way out and follow up with them. So, um, and we'll give them an opportunity if they have any complaints to, to lodge those then. So far, nobody's ever really complained um, at all. There's my information. Um, so if you guys have any, uh, any questions at all, um, that's where you find me. Okay.